All right, thanks for joining me. This is Vol, and this is it. It's the grand final of Court Arms 2012. Um, we're playing on the uh, the show table with all the wonderful modular effects and uh, and scenery. And it's Cater against Retribution. And um, my opponent for this game is Chris B, who was the same guy that I played in the finals against uh, for NatCon, which you guys may remember I managed to win in a very, very, very close game. Uh, this particular game will feature my PRisk list uh, against his Raven list. And um, the problem is that this is a, a very, very dangerous matchup for me. Um, it's a scenario that I can't win very easily and quickly. And uh, Raven has plenty of space on the board, uh, and there's very little places that Iris can hide. Uh, so she's got the maximum unit of Mage Hunter Assassins there. She's got Iron and Holt. She's got two units of Stormfall. So she's got two ways of really easily winning the game. Number one way is to put uh, Kissa Lilis on the Colossal and just blow the crap out of it over one turn, if they're lucky, or two turns, uh, probably more likely. And um, if that happens, then I send my assassins in. They've got various different ways of, of dealing with the assassins, and uh, eventually it's an attrition war that I'll probably lose. The other way to win is the more obvious and simple way, and that is just to um, move the uh, Mage Hunter Strike Force up, put Snipe on them, pop the feet, and use Phantom Seeker to shoot Irisk. Now, they are rat uh, 6 or something like that. Irisk is defense 15, then he nines to hit, but it's on 3 dice and he's armor 15, so all shots are at dice minus 5. You're going to do, on average, 2 uh, two damage per per shooter, although some of those rolls will be below um, 5, so uh, over the long run it's not exactly 2 per shooter, but all you need to do is get uh, 8 or 9 in there, and you're expecting to kill him, because he's got, what, 15 boxes or something like that. So um, I knew in my heart that this was going to be a very, very difficult game to win, and I was sort of really expecting second place here, but I was proud to have made it to the finals. Um, so my game plan, after thinking about it very, very carefully, was to cautiously advance the Chiazi in a, a long string with the Colossal behind them. Uh, I would run the first turn, and the second turn the plan would be to throw down the Creeping Fire templates to make it harder for the uh, Mage Hunter or Strike Force to move up and then shoot at Iris. Irisk. Irisk would stay f far forward enough to feed on the second turn, but um, not too far forward that it would be easy to get all, all ten Assassins and Mage Hunter Strike Force shooting at the same time. Would it make us an Iris going up forward, just looking for any opportunity to move up within stealth range and, and kill a couple of them, because if I can get even one or two, that is you know more chance for, for Iris to survive. Next image, here's uh, Chris's deployment here, radial deployment. Um, Chris has by far the best painting skills for War Machine of Hordes in New Zealand, and as you can see, his army looks absolutely brilliant. He's got Raven there on 6 Focus, and he's got um, he's got the Banshee. He's got two uh, Mage Hunter Assassins. He's got Nan, and he's got um, uh, an Arcanist in there, Einar and Holt, as we saw, and the, um, the Artificer guy with the Mega Mittens. I can't remember his exact name, and of course, Epic Iris. Uh, Chris is taking the first turn here. So next image, here is what the table looks like after we've both taken one turn. Iris has moved out in the Gorman Cloud, not that it helps against the Strike Force. He's got Iron Flesh on the Assassins, spaced them out um, as wide as possibly can while advancing as far forward as possibly can. Superior in the Conquest. Um, the Widowmakers have set up on the hill and the Great Bears are going right around the side with Iris because um, what I feel is that if they can sort of stay out of the way and get into a position where they can ch they can charge at the strike force when they're positioning themselves to, to threaten Irisk, then I might be able to get in the way and on the feet turn pass some of those tough rolls and uh, force them to come within melee ranges. So just some of these, these, these small little tactics to sort of mitigate the threat of Raven start to add up a little bit, but it's still very dire. I mean, it, it's just a straightforward black and white situation of me losing the game instantly if he gets you know, even a sniff of a chance. So just got to be very careful about it and we'll see what uh, crops up in turn two. So turn two, um, Chris moving in fairly carefully with um, uh, the bulk of his troops here and um, shooting the Stormfall archers first. Getting a bit unlucky with the scatter distances. He does pick off two or three assassins uh, during this turn, but not as many as he was hoping for. Uh, the strike force move in and take a few pot shots at the Colossal, doing about seven damage total, but nothing serious. And um, importantly, the artificer guy at the back moving in and putting down uh, an ability which I forgot he had, which obviously is very, very relevant here, and that's the everybody within three inches immune to blast damage. 
Next photo, um, this is my turn two, and this is the critical turn that I had to get absolutely right. Um, Iris moves up in feats, and he does put himself in a situation where a lot of those uh, mage hunters can move to within six in 16 inches of him under um, under snipe and uh, raven's feet and, and seal the deal. The, um, the great bears have moved around the forest into a situation where they can't automatically be charged by the mage hunter assassins. And the colossal moving up and laying down four uh, templates in situations where the strike force will have to move into them and, um, and take the power six, which they may not be able to survive. The assassins moving up and they've got four plus tough and just getting to positions where hopefully I can narrow that bottleneck and, and make it harder for them to get um, all ten of those mage hunter strike force into to shoot Irisk. Irisk also does have four plus tough under the feet as well, so if only one shot gets through his, his final box, he might be out of 50% uh, you know, ignore it, so sort of fingers crossed for that. Now playing very cautiously and cagely so far, but I did make a mistake here, and that was uh, attempting to fire at one of the Stormfall Arches with my Crit Devastation main gun. The correct move here, by far, and this would have been a, an amazing move, is to fire the Crit Devastation guns at the, um, the Artificer and get a, a crit. Now the chance of that not too high, somewhere between 20 and 40, 20 and 40 percent. Can't remember quite quite what it is. Close to 30. And um, if I'd managed to pull that off, though, what it would have meant is that uh, tons of the guys around him would have taken a throw damage roll instead of blast damage. They would have died, and um, he would have been knocked down. And if I'd rolled high enough, been too far away to actually get into position to stop the strike force from moving through the clouds, that would have made life a lot safer for me on the following turn. But I forgot about that, so he's got a legit chance here, and um, if he does this correctly, what will happen is that the um, the guy with the, the mittens there will move up, put down his little barrier, and um, everybody will move forward through the cloud. Um, so the, the Kiazi will probably have been killed off by the storm falls by this stage, and um, he'll probably have about um, eight guys to shoot at Iris with, and that should be enough to, to do it. Next photo... Um, he moves in here to try and deal damage to the assassins and actually moving in with Raven herself, um, trying to get uh, some Eliminator and, uh, and uh, some attacks going off in the assassins but failing thanks to my, my passing the 4 plus toughs with the feet. Uh, Banshee is still sitting there. So Raven is in a situation where she's basically saying to me, look, this is the last turn of the game. My opponent even went, took a bathroom break for 10 minutes, even on the death clock time, counting down from 55, because he knew that there wasn't going to be another turn after this, and it was a matter of him killing me. So Raven's out in front. She's in a position where she's got her feet happening, and that will cover all of the strike force needing the extra um, attack roll to kill Iris with. Next photo, here is the, the crunch time shot, and um, everybody moves in. Um, turns out that um, he'd, he'd made a critical mistake, and uh, this is really a game-changing thing. He's moved his Stormfalls in to shoot at the Chiesi to try and um, clip them with, with AoE damage, but he'd accidentally blocked in his, his Artificer in a situation where the Artificer couldn't move over to the right and, um, and get them all through the clouds. So he's only really covering them for, for entering two of the clouds with his 3-inch anti-blast. So what it meant was that I think uh, Chris managed to get, uh, I think, five... Strike force in to shoot at Iris at the end of the day. Might have even been six, but five um, is not really enough to get the damage boxes on him unless he gets a decent roll with one of them. And um, all five shots goes off. He needs nines to hit on three dice and damaging at dice minus two, no, dice minus five. And uh, he just did nowhere near as much damage to kill Iris as he needed to. Uh, one or two of the shots on needing nines on three dice even missed, which was um, very demoralizing. But we're left with a situation where uh, a raven is sitting out in the open with only one focus uh, on her with the feet, and now I have an opportunity to kill her. However, going to the next photo, um, Chris makes some last-ditch attempt, attempts to make life hard for me to do the follow-up assassination by moving um, uh, Iris in to stop the conquest from getting focus, uh, which will make it very hard for me to get in there and actually attack um, uh, attack Raven. And he puts uh, his Banshee in the way as well for Iris uh, himself going in and getting some shots on her. So it's really just purely going to come down to the assassins. 
what I ended up doing is that I, in my turn, I decided I was just going to go for it. Uh, I could see that there were very few opportunities to, to win the game apart from the assassins going in there, but if I could fit four of them in, including the underboss, that would be five attacks total, needing sixes to hit under gang, and uh, with battle lust, it would be, you know, power twelves against her armor plus one for focus. So that's what I did. Uh, Wishnailer moved in, and then Iris moved into his command range. I had the eight inches to be assassins. I cast battle lust on them and we shall go to the next photo. Now, um, due to spacing issues, um, I declared a charge here when I should have probably just declared a walk and you know engaged her with about five of them instead of three. But um, I declared the charge order and I found that I could only fit three assassins in. So it's actually only four attacks. So I would probably need a good two or three hits to kill her. And I had to hit these with six pluses and I only had four attempts. Now the underboss pulled out his knife rolled the 6 plus and he rolled 4 dice for damage with battle lust under the feet and he rolled something like a 6, 6, 4, 3 or something like that and uh, my opponent just shook my hand and was like yep that's it you know I got the lion's share of good luck this game but um, having said that um, I think my turn 2 I played it about as well as I could have um, if you guys can see any better ways that I could have dealt with the threat of Raven better than I did, apart from, you know, not attempting the critical devastation on the, um, the Artificer, let me know because um, this was a tough matchup. My opponent did what he needed to win. He made probably a couple more errors than I did. And um, in terms of blast marker uh, scattering and rolls to hit and tough rolls, I definitely had the lion's share of good luck. But it meant that I came out on top uh, first place at uh, the largest War Machine of Hordes tournament that New Zealand's ever seen, uh, 44 players I think it was. So feeling especially proud and especially to have used the Conquest in its debut in both lists and one of those lists being my favourite cast of all time, um, Vlad 2. Um, hope you guys really enjoyed the reports as much as I did playing the games. I will put out one more video later on once the results come out just talking about the overview or about how everybody else did. But uh, for now, um, thanks for watching.